all right guys welcome back and in this video I want to show you how to create a really simple HTTP server so remember that Node.js it's a little bit different than plain vanilla JavaScript because plain JavaScript was made for the web browser so if you're just on a desktop or a laptop chilling in your living room you could run some JavaScript and that's all good but the code that we write in these next couple of tutorials this is code that's going to be on a server so in other words whenever you create a website people are going to try to connect to that server wherever it is make a request for let's say like some um, like a web file or web page or some info from your database whatever and your server is going to be responsible for looking at the request and sending them back some information or some files whatever so that's actually how you can picture it actually let me go ahead and right click and make a new file maybe a little bit easier to understand server.js so this is let me clean this up and actually we don't even need this app.js we'll just run everything in the server.js file so yeah I know whenever I'm making these tutorials I'm on a Windows machine just sitting in my room however think of it like this the code that I write in IntelliJ in these next couple tutorials this is code that's going to be on the server and whenever I'm using the browser just think of me of like some user who's trying to connect to your server like I don't know like over in California or wherever so again this is code that's going to be on the server and when I hop over to the browser I'm just some user trying to connect to your website alright so let's go ahead and get started now if you think alright making a server sounds really hard we probably need to download some like operating systems like Apache I heard of that before I probably need to stick that in there somewhere well it is actually incredibly easy and that's one of the things I really love about node.js so one of the things that we need is the HTTP module that's already built in so require HTTP and I'm just gonna store it in a variable called HTTP and check this out the only thing that you need to do to pretty much turn your Node.js code and pretty much create a server is this your HTTP object call a method called create server now the parameter of this takes one thing and that's a request listener essentially this is going to be your callback or what code do you want to run whenever a user tries to connect to your server and of course this function that we write in here it's going to be something like send them back a web file or a web page or some info from our database whatever so we didn't code this yet but I'm just gonna call it like on request and also another thing I want to point out is whenever they connect to your server your server has to be listening for a request so I'm just gonna say listen and inside here how the heck did that pop up inside here you just put the port number and I'm just gonna put 88 Eight, eight. Now another thing I want to do real quick is whenever we start this program I just want to log something now in the terminal just so we have a little indicator that alright the server is now running so I'll put console.log and I'll just put like a uh, server is now running alright so what we did already is we created a server and whenever we start this program it's going to be listening for traffic or listening for users to request through this port and it's going to just log something out on the command line so whenever a user tries to connect to our server what we want to do is we want to call this function on request so since it's going to be looking for a function called on request we of course have to build one now whenever it calls this function this callback function it's gonna pass in two parameters two pieces of information the first one is the request object and this object is pretty much just information about the users request in other words you can learn things like what information were they trying to get what web page were they trying to connect to all that stuff any information about the users request we can access through there now the other object we need is response so our response is the object that we can send back to them so if they're like looking for a web file we can send it back through the response we can also send um, like status information like okay the connection was good or 
you know we couldn't find what you were looking for here is a nice old error for you whatever so again the request is from them the response is what we're sending back and hopefully you know it's like a web file or something like that so the first thing I actually want to do is this I just want to print something out so we can visually see what's going on so whenever a user makes a request I'm just gonna log out a user uh, made a request pretty creative I know and actually let me show you guys something cool and this is actually something that confuses a lot of people and I'm not gonna explain what it is right now but um, whenever I run this there's a little weird um, thing that you might not expect something happens twice and you may think it only should happen once I'll explain what's going on in a second but whenever a user makes a request the first thing I'm gonna do is print something out in our terminal just so we can visually see what's going on and then I'm gonna start building my response what I'm gonna send back to them so for the response the first thing I want to do is write head right there alright so before I hit enter check this out this takes a couple different parameters a status code now whenever you are sending something back to the user there are already a bunch of status codes that you may already be familiar with 200 is pretty much the status code that says hey everything went okay um, you requested something I'm sending it back no problems you probably already know of 404 as well this means that um, whatever you requested I couldn't find what you're looking for something probably didn't go according to plan and there are a couple other ones as well and you know we'll talk about those later on the next piece of information is just header information and it says what type of data are you sending back to them and for now I'll just send like a simple plain text and these can also be like files but for right now um, we do is you call context type in capital letters and then since this is an object you need a value so text plain and that with a semicolon alright so what we're saying right here is we're gonna send you back in our a response everything is going good so far in the type of data that I'm sending back is just plain data just like a string so now you actually have to write some string or some data so response write pretty much allows you to write your response and I'll just say like um here is your response whatever or here is some data I'll just say that alright now the last thing you need to do is you need to call response dot end and this just signifies that the response is ending and it actually sends it off so let's go ahead and run this and check out what's happening so server is now running and actually before I do that let me stop it so this program isn't running yet because I just stopped it and check it out so obviously whenever a user wants to connect to it this would eventually you know be some web address but for right now we're just running it on localhost which is the address of whatever program your server and port 888 and remember in like the for first tutorial we set everything up so if we just try to connect to it right now try to refresh it it says this web page is not available it's saying that because remember this is pretty much our server and our server is not running yet because even though I just run it I stopped it so we pretty much have no server or no program running right here so check this out whenever I run it it says server is now running and this program is now listening for users to connect so now what ha look what happens when someone connects with it it prints out here is some data why did that happen well check it out so it was pretty much a listening for a user to connect and whenever they connected it just log out a user made a request and then it printed the URL of pretty much what web page they were trying to access so it says okay user made a request and the user made a request favicon hmm you see I only refresh the page once or try to connect to it once so why did it make two requests and this is the thing I wanted to point out and it tricks a lot of people up whenever a user connects to your computer or excuse me whenever a user from wherever they are they try to connect to your server 
what your browser does is it first sends a request for whatever page they were looking for in this case just the home page and it also makes another request behind the scenes for the favicon in other words this little icon right here you see the new Boston is like a little um, red square with arrow and github is like a little black cat or whatever so a lot of people um, whenever they're first starting out they're like why is you know it's sending like a double request every time that's why so you know I just thought I'd explain it so again moving on whenever we get a request from a user what we say is okay hop over to this code and pretty much run this chunk of code this callback method right here so first I'm gonna log something out and then I'm gonna set up my response says okay everything's running good so far I'm gonna send you back some plain text and then we just send them back the text or whatever information they're looking for so that is why we got this little bit of code and again I'm gonna refresh this or actually let me just hit enter and go there again so now that would signify another user trying to connect and look at what happens we now get another request from another user so again there you go and eventually we're gonna be sending back files instead of just little stupid strings of data but now they understand the basics of it uh yeah that's that so thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video